What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be learning all about push notifications in your iOS apps. If you're not familiar, push notifications are any notification alert sound badges that you can send to indicate things like messages or any important events that occur. So without further ado, drop a like down below, hit subscribe while you're at it, and let's jump into implementing this. So first things first, I've got Xcode here, and I've also got my physical device uh, being displayed here since you need a physical device to test out push notifications. We're going to go ahead and create a new project as per usual. We'll stick with the app template under iOS, and I'm going to go ahead and call this 2021 push example. Make sure your language is set to Swift Lifecycle UI Kit and your interface could be Storyboard or Swift UI, doesn't matter, we're not going to focus on the UI today. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like, I'm going to toss it onto my desktop here. And the first thing that we actually want to do is understand how push notification servers work. The idea, and actually what's also demonstrated in this uh, picture here, is we need to have a server that notifies APNS, which stands for Apple Push Notification Service, which further sends a notification to our user's device. Now, setting up a server from scratch is a little bit of a pain. You can do it, certainly, in Python or PHP, any backend language. However, we're going to use Firebase today to do it since it makes implementation a breeze. So that said, first thing first, we're going to close up Xcode here and we're going to want to bring in the Firebase dependencies into our project. So let's go ahead and open up Terminal. We're going to CD into our project here and we're going to run pod init. This is going to go ahead and initialize CocoaPods and we're going to open up the newly created pod file. Now in here, we want to bring in two dependencies. The first one allows us to hook up Firebase, and then the second one allows us to get the Firebase functionality for notifications, which is known as messaging in the Firebase world. So once you've gone ahead and brought both of those in, you can go ahead and run pod install just like that, and it's going to go ahead and install your dependencies. It shouldn't take too long. There it is. We've got them installed. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is open up our project folder and we should have a .exe workspace that we'll jump into. Now the actual code to set up the notifications is quite trivial, it's very simple, but we do need to do a little bit of legwork on the back end on Firebase to hook things up. Now before we actually go ahead and do that, on the main uh, panel here, one thing you want to copy is your bundle ID, we're going to need this in a few different places. We'll also want to hit signing and capabilities and hit plus capability, search up push notifications and select it to bring it in just like that. The next thing I'll go ahead and do in here is in the app delegate where we'll be writing the majority of our code is delete these functions down here. We actually don't need them and you want to import three things. First one being Firebase, second one being Firebase messaging and third one being user notifications, which is how we're going to ask the user to consent to push notifications. Now I'm going to go ahead and run Firebase app.configure here. I'm going to select my device from the drop down and we're going to do a build and run. And while this guy's building and running, we're going to go ahead and set up our dashboard here in the browser. So I've got an Apple developer account opened up to keys, which we'll come back to momentarily. And I've also got Firebase's dashboard opened up. So let's go ahead and create an application here. I'm going to go ahead and call it push 2021, just like we called our app. Go ahead and continue, continue. We'll pretend like we read all of this. We'll select the default account for analytics and we'll let this do its thing. Now, after we got this project set up, we need to add the iOS app. It looks like our project did successfully build here and we are in fact crashing right now. And that's expected because we need to bring in a Firebase configuration file, which we're going to grab from here in just a moment. Now, Firebase makes, it, makes all of this setup really easy. If you did it manually, it's still pretty straightforward, but it is definitely more work. So let's go ahead into the dashboard here, select iOS, going to go ahead and paste in that bundle ID we copied. We're going to continue here, and the next thing it's going to give us is the big blue button to download our Google services plist. We'll go ahead and drag that to my desktop and subsequently drag it into our project. Make sure you copy it. 
We're going to go ahead and continuously hit next here, pretending like we actually read what they're telling us to read, since we're smart enough to just do it ourselves. And now, what we want to go ahead and do is hit that run button one more time. And now you're going to notice that the app should not be crashing. It'll go ahead and, in fact, simply launch and stay there. Now, my device is in dark mode, which is why we see an empty black screen. Let's go ahead and write the minimum code that we need here to register for push notifications. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to conform to two protocols. The first one is messaging delegates. Let's make sure I spell that correctly. Messaging uh, delegates so messaging delegate, just like that. The next one is the UN user notifications uh, delegates. Let's go ahead and bring that in. Now there are a few things that we need to do here. The first thing we want to go ahead and do is say messaging dot messaging dot delegate is self. We're also going to go ahead and say UN user notification center dot current dot delegate is also self. The third thing we want to do is request consent from the user to deliver notifications. So you've probably seen this screen many times in other apps, but the way we do it is request for authorization. We're going to request for an alert to play a notification sound and a badge. And badges are those little numbers that you see on app icons. This is going to give us success as well as an error. We're going to be lazy and ignore the error since it really shouldn't occur. We're going to say guard that success, you know, is true. And if it is true, we're going to go ahead and say print out uh, the fact that we registered. So we'll say success uh, in APNS registry. Now, the next thing we're going to go ahead and do, pretty important, we're going to say application. We're going to say register for remote notifications. Make sure you don't forget to add this here, otherwise this won't work. And finally, I'm also going to say messaging. And let me actually do this in the Firebase function that we need to add. Let's go ahead and say messaging. And in here, we're going to say messaging dot uh, current uh, token, I believe, or it might be just called token now. We'll see a token in here. We're going to ignore that error. Guard let token is token return and we're going to simply print out the token that firebase has saved in its backend now you might be wondering what is all this token nonsense the way that tokens work are it uniquely identifies your uh, app instance that way you can't randomly send you know notifications to some random user right tokens uniquely identify your device and your app so let me go ahead and give this a run and while we do that let me make sure i have my device in view here and we should see the uh, alert here to allow push notifications we're going to hit allow and let's see what happens all right that went away nothing too exciting so let me actually take a look at the console here and we should see our token has been printed out so it says success in apns registry here is our token let's go ahead and run that one more time and we should see the token in here we shouldn't see any errors and basically what's left to do is send a notification. So I believe we've got everything that we need here. Back in our console, what we need to do, we need to hit the settings gear at the top left. I'm gonna hit project settings and we wanna hit cloud messaging. Now Firebase basically needs a way to communicate with Apple. So here we go into the Apple developer portal and we've gone to certificates, identifiers and profiles and then we select the keys on the left. We need to create a key that is tied to our developer accounts because this is the key that Firebase uses to send notification requests to Apple. So I'm going to call this push 2021. We're going to check the first box for Apple push notification service. And that's actually all you need to do. Go ahead and hit continue. It's going to give you a little bit of a summary. Hit continue one more time and it's going to give you an option to download your key. It also gives you a warning that you can only download it once. So do not lose this key. Pretty important to keep a backup of it. And then we're going to hit done and we should be good to go. We've got a key here. Now you might have already guessed this. We now need to tell Firebase about this key. So we're going to scroll down to this iOS section. We're going to hit upload and it's going to basically say drag in your key. Boom. There it is. The next thing we want to do is enter the key ID, which we've done as well. And now it's saying enter your team ID. Now, the team ID, in my experience, is a little flaky. So what you can do is copy it from up here and bring it on in. If it doesn't work here, sometimes Firebase can actually detect it. But let's go ahead and bring it in and see if it cooperates. 
Let's see if it does. If it doesn't, we might have to set this up one more time. So it looks like it is not cooperating. So let's see, team ID required. We'll go ahead and bring that in and try another time. All right, looks like it has taken it. And now it's time to send a push notification and let's see if it actually works end to end. So let me go ahead and set up my device to receive said push. Let's go ahead and let me do this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off do not disturb since we wanna see those push notifications come in. And the way that you're actually gonna send the notification is by going to cloud messaging on the left here under the engage tab. We're gonna hit send message and we're gonna type a message in. So we'll say hello world, hello from the iOS Academy channel. Let's go ahead and uh, continue here. We're gonna hit next. It's gonna ask, where do you wanna send it? Well, we wanna send it to our app, of course. We'll hit next. We wanna send it now, looking good. We're not gonna care about conversions. On this last step here, we do want to enable sound and we also wanna enable a badge count and maybe we'll go ahead and set this to one. So let's go ahead and confirm and confirm one more time and let's see if we get a notification. Now, if we don't get it, we might need to debug this together in terms of why we're not getting it. My hunch is, oh, I think I just saw it there. My hunch is uh, that it might be related to that key we uploaded. So it looks like we actually didn't get it. And actually, actually, I take it back. It looks like we did get it. So it looks like it's just a little slow. I'm going to let that notification dismiss so I can pull it down. And boom, there is the push notification. Hello world. Hello from the iOS Academy channel. Look how cool that is, guys. So let's do a quick recap because I think I was a little all over the place. The premise of sending a push notification is your backend, whatever it is, either a server or Firebase, what have you, needs to send a request to APNS, which is Apple's server, and that's going to further deliver the notification to the device. So we need a way to identify which device and which app is making the request, hence we generate a token. Now, Firebase is incredibly well implemented where we don't need to write a lot of code by any means to actually register and get consent from the user for said notification. Now, obviously, we're sending the push notification manually here. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see ways to automate this. Maybe when you know users send messages to each other, like a real-time messaging app, you can save these tokens in a database, and you can, you can do some pretty intricate things, just like other apps do with push notifications. And the last thing I'm going to double, double down on here is if you don't see the notification for, for any reason, make sure that you have the capability properly added here, like I do, push notifications, and make sure your key is correct. So you need to have a developer account to get this key and developer.apple.com, you'll see this option. And we generated a key that allows us to send things to push notification as indicated here. And that's basically it. That's Apple push notifications in a nutshell. Let me know if you have any comments down below. Hopefully that was straightforward. Drop a like down below if you haven't done so already. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.